All right, hello, hello. Hey everyone, getting ready to roll into another uh, Raw and Uncut series here. I'm just gonna do a little work today. Take these off. Do a little work today on the oil paint rendering stuff. Um, this is part of a couple of videos that I've been hammering through this week to, to put a quick 10 minute how-to that'll hopefully drop on Friday on the oil paint rendering and the process I use for model railroading. And this all comes from Michael Rinaldi's work, and I'll put a link in the comments uh, here. So check that out. Michael's got some great stuff, some great books. Um, and I'll probably reference uh, one or two of them here in this session today as I'm, I'm going through some stuff. But we're going to work on um, the DPM modular brick stuff today. And just real simplistically go through. I might try a few things out. I'm going to swap, you know, mess around with some colors today. And the goal will be working with with these two pieces. We'll test out some staining, and, and this one was done a while back. I'm just going to work right over the top of it. Um, it's it's fine. It's layers are good, and that's one of the things with the oil paint rendering that, that I'll get into a little bit is that as you start developing and building up layers, the the project really starts coming to life. So we'll work on this today. I'll see where I can get with about 45 minutes to an hour's worth of work, just to start seeing. Um, what you can do in that amount of time so that you can start gauging, you know, is this process right for you? Um, is it something that, that, that you're interested in, in, in pursuing? Uh, it is different. It's not the acrylic wash stuff. It's not using the cheap ceramic coat, apple barrel stuff that you can pick up from Hobby Lobby. I do use that stuff uh, for the acrylic side when I'm painting individual bricks. So I, I don't know if I'll get into that here in this session or not, but we'll see. I, I just want to work a little bit with the oils, give you guys a, a little bit of a overview on how I do that without being rushed through the 10 minute series. That's really something uh, that should be fun for me to hammer through. It's kind of this challenge I have. How can I put how to videos together that cram, cram a bunch of information into 10 minutes that, that more people will tend to sit and watch through. So. Um, with that being said, I'll just go through um, the oils I got set up for today. This is, uh, again, straight from Michael's work. It's setting up your oils on a piece of cardboard so the linseed oil gets pulled out. This was set up two days ago now. Yeah, I think two days ago, 48 hours. And so it's it, some of them are, are drying out pretty good. But that's what you want. You want the ability to manipulate these. And work through it and then I've got you know a, a ceramic jar of my odorless paint thinner I just use the the $15 bottle it's like 30, yeah, 32 ounce brand from Hobby Lobby uh, go up there try and get it when they have their 50% off coupon and I just recently started using the the master's touch oil colors uh, they're a little I'm not super, super in tune with oil painting because I don't do it other than this process, but they seem to be just a little bit more, uh, I don't know if gritty is the right word, um, but they actually work really good for this process. But then I've got some other stuff. Um, the the Daler Downey stuff is, is really good. Um, the, the pigments seem to be a little bit richer. And then I've got some of Winton's oil colors. Uh, these these seem to work really good. I get all my stuff from Hobby Lobby. They're always running stuff 50% off or so. In, in this process, I'm not trying to be a master painter. So you don't need to go spend crazy amount of money. I picked up, they have a, a I, don't, I didn't save the box, I wish I had, but the, the Master's Touch series, you can there's like 24 colors, I think, in the palette. The only thing it's missing is the grays and maybe a, a, a tan or two, but they you can get a full palette of these. Right now they're 50% off. So I think I paid 10 bucks for this, 24 colors, and these will last a long, long, long time. So that's, I mean, for 20 bucks, you can get into this relatively inexpensively. You can get a small bottle of odorless thinner. Don't get the water-based kind. I will say that. Um, it They just don't, they don't work. I, maybe it's just with these particular oils, but it, it's an, it's a, it's an odorless thinner, but it's water-based, and so I'm guessing maybe it's for acrylics or watercolors or something. And I screwed up and got that the first time when I was doing this years ago, and I was like, Man, this this process sucks. Um, but it's because I was using the wrong stuff. So with that, I've got I, I I have to turn the music off so I don't hear it, 
but I kind of like to hear the music, and I just realized I'm gonna try today with the he one headphone on. We'll see how it goes, but I get I, it's all new to me. So, and this is the beauty of the raw and uncut stuff. I'm gonna try stuff, so I'll have it on one ear. We'll see how it goes. So I like to have music in my ear when I'm working, which is why you have it on stream. So I just load up the brushes, get them wet. And uh, the first thing we'll do, let's let's work on the on this raw piece here first. <clears throat> so when we're working with the grout, <coughs> excuse me. I don't I don't want to flood the surface, but you need to get the surface wet. <coughs> Goodness. So I think you, you should be able to see getting that surface wet. And then literally this is how simple this whole thing is. And then it, then it boils down to developing techniques and blending colors. But I'm just gonna do it with white here so that you can see it pull in. And I'm, I'm loading this brush up pretty juicy. I'm making it pretty juicy. I'm gonna drag it across here in a second. So you can kind of see how much I have on the brush. Uh, let's see if I can get this up close for you. Boom. Yeah, you, you thought it was something that's gonna be crazy difficult, huh? No, and, and if you're just, if you control it, you can go across the entire surface. It doesn't take long. You can see it starts to thin out, come back. Some more paint in the brush. And I'm not, I'm not trying to get into the grout joints. I'm literally just raking this brush right across the surface. And you can already see just in this little piece, you start getting a little bit of a deviation. This is a test piece I'm just using for stuff. So it's, 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 it's good. We'll work with this. I'll get some grays on this here in a second. But you see how it starts to, to wash out a little bit? This is, this is what I love about the oil paint rendering method you can actually control the opacity of the oils going down on these models by how much you, how much paint you load into your brush. So if you get it super juicy, it's gonna thin that oil out naturally, which leaves this color a little, um, little transparent and, and gives you some flexibility. And that's where I was talking about in, in an earlier post about the, the modulation and, and color manipulation of of the brick in and of itself when you when you put this color down inside the mortar joints that contrast in and of itself it just starts to shift the color of the brick a little bit because you're shifting the opacity of your mortar joint so it's just that kind of control you can't get it with acrylics i've never been able to get it with acrylics in that in the wash method did you see you know, tons of people doing. I, I tried it, I tried it, I tried it. I've never, ever, ever been really good and successful at it. But you can see that capillary action. And, and now I got over here into the dry side. It still drops in, but it doesn't spread quite as quickly. So you can use that to your advantage as well. Um, but you can see here, and in, in we're less than five minutes here, and I'm, we're already showing how, how quick and, and dirty this method is. It's awesome. So now I'll, I'll go through some, and again, I'm hitting over the dry sides here. It slides right in. So if you don't want to wet it and get the extra capillary action, you don't have to. I do it just because I know there's a little bit more control. That way, we'll get in, we'll, give me a second. We'll uh, dry this up just a touch. So you can see how that slid in. We're gonna go over this with some gray. And again, we're just working through, we're gonna manipulate this color a bit. 
before we jump into the larger piece and start really looking at how I can achieve some effects there. So if I just go over the same, you can see how when it's dry, it doesn't quite slide in. That's good. So I'm gonna go ahead and wet this a little bit again. Doesn't have to be much. I'm dropping a dark, uh, a dark gray, and this one is actually uh, cold gray. And I'm going to show some manipulation of this color with some of these tans and browns here, also. Again, this is this is unpainted. This this is not the final piece. So that raw plastic is going to behave just a touch different. It doesn't have. I didn't. I didn't matte coat this, um, which really, I, my my opinion is this works best over a matte coat. You do not need a gloss coat to do this. You know, I may I may go ahead and use this piece today that I put some decals on. I think I've grabbed enough photos of that. Now I'm just I'm pulling some of this white back in. There, now you can start to see that that gray really settling, Change, shifting the colors. So now it's not stark white. It's not completely gray. I'll add some browns in here. We'll see how that works. This is the beauty of the Raw and Uncut series, guys, is that I'm going to go ahead and practice and do some things that probably lead into videos and tutorials, test and stuff. This one got a little dry on me. Tease some of that back out. Yeah, the, the 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 thing with creating this palette is that it, your your oils are good. I'm finding for about two days, pretty consistently. And then the third day, it starts to get. You can still use it, but you just got to work it a lot more. So again, we're just we're going right over the top, and I'm not I'm not using a separate blending brush with this. I just I, I end up I I just tend to keep mixing. All of them just gently tapping the surface and then those oils start to blend together right here on the, the surface. I'm gonna come back, grab some more gray. Get a little bit of this. You can see how juicy I'm getting this because I want it to settle right down in.
off and that way I can get the color to settle in a little better. As, and you'll figure that out. Once once it gets a little bit too wet, you, you start to lose control. You can't get as much paint down in that joint. Because it's it's thinning it out quicker. And so you just right now you can see I've got about a third of that is, is paint up in the tip. And what I want you guys to see is that this is naturally even brushing across the top. It just the, the oils naturally just sit right down in there. So if you enjoy the painting process um, and, and aren't afraid to, to get in and, and have you know really total control, then then you'll love this. This is a great 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 method. Um, if you don't enjoy painting, this probably isn't isn't the best thing um, for you to jump into and, and try and figure out. I'm gonna let this dry for a second. Just because it, it it's, it, I don't want to say time consuming because everybody has a, a little bit different concept of how much time they like to spend on their modeling. Um, I like to I like to sit down really for like hour at a time when I when I'm doing painting related work, and so that I can get in and, and figure things like this out. Um, so that for me it's a it's an unwinding process. Um, I don't need to build you know, crank out one model every week. That's not, that's not enjoyable to me. Um, a lot of times I start something and then it sits, <clears throat> literally how my mind thinks here, it'll sit um, at like the 25% build stage and I'll start something else. And good, bad, and different, it's how I model because the way my brain works as an architect, I'm constantly designing. And so the, the hurdle that I run into it's it's next to impossible for me to build a, a, a kit out of the box. I just, it, my brain doesn't want me to do it. There's always something I want to customize. And so it's a struggle for me to just do what's on the box and, and call it good. That's just, that, again, that's personal modeling preference. So, <coughs> excuse me. What I tend to do is, is build those models to 25, 30% let them sit and while I'm working on something else my brain is still still chewing through what do I want to do with this model what where do, where do I want to start stop in terms of customization <clears throat> even with the kit stuff give me coffee real quick guys <clears throat> because I might change my mind during a build which I think is good I, I mean change is good whether it's at the very end or halfway through a model build. If you're not someone that's really trying to crank out model after model after model on a set schedule to build a full layout. That's not me. It doesn't matter if it takes me 50 years to to get you know the full layout done. I've got I probably have about 12 projects currently moving with the refinery. <clears throat> and now I'm jumping into the video stuff. This is all new, but it's a great accountability piece because now I'm trying to get some things a little bit more strategic and on track. This being a big one because a lot of my modeling does this. This is, again, I use the same process um, for my rolling stock. I've never really focused on it because I'm going to blame Michael. I'm going to blame you for this one um, because I've never really wanted to before the last couple of months get into using this process and really showing what can be done. And then Michael started doing it and I was like, okay, I just need to do this because I, I've been using the oil paint rendering method for a couple of years now. And I was like, I'm gonna start showing some people regularly what we can do with, this is a cheap roundhouse kit. Um, so it's got the molded on ladders, grab irons. I mean, it's it's as basically as cheap as you can get. But versus using the sponge method and, and you know, just taking a brush and calling it weathering across the surface, I'm like, no, that, that's not good. We can take these cheap $5 cars and turn them into quality rolling stock that then you can blend in with your 
30, 40, 50, $100 pieces that are much more detailed, you can practice on these and then you might lightly weather some of those other pieces that you might be a little nervous about getting to. But you can see some of the depth. I mean, I've got shadow in here from where the door overlaps. So when you think about how the sun hits these cars and normal wear and tear, and then I've started working on the top rail, just bringing some, some streaking down. Haven't done any rust on this car at all yet, none. This is just, you know, ground spray, you know, up through the New England states or, you know, Chicago and where it's, you know, can get muddy and, and disgusting, you know, as rolling stock, you know, hammers through the, the landscape. And then just the, the wear and tear on how this works. So it's, I mean, it's, you can use this for anything. I'm, I'm focusing on the building piece because there aren't a lot of people that do it for buildings. Uh, the armor modelers are, are heavy into this. The, the gunpla modelers are, are heavy into this. And there's all kinds of techniques. But you're not going to see very many model railroaders using this because it's using oils and model railroading is, I think, somewhat of a foreign concept because I think modelers are intimidated. And what I want to show is that, hey, this is super simple, super easy, and uh, and works great. So. I'm going to set this one off to the side. We're going to go ahead and I'll come back to this and, and work some stuff in the bottom. I want to get the, the main, I'm going to get the full grout rolling on this piece and you can see how quickly we can grout this whole thing. And again, you don't have to worry about being like crazy, crazy specific with where things roll. Just, you know, we're going to wet the surface. We're going to get moving. You can do large areas, small areas at a time. You know, those overlaps. In, in the grout joints create, you know, kind of some unique, interesting patterns sometimes. And it's so easy to come back and manipulate. Um, you can actually let this stuff sit on here for a day or two. I haven't gone back to any of my earlier stuff to see, you know, once you let it sit for a month or so, if, if you can still come back and, and manipulate it by layers on top. It might be too dry to really work in by then, but if you don't like what you've done, you can hit it with thinner and, uh, and, and basically erase it, for lack of a better description. But this, this piece here is just raw plastic, no prep work that was just hit. Well, I say no prep work. I put the, the the side pillar pieces on. But this is just Rust-Oleum. Cheap Rust-Oleum primer paint. You know, at like 8 to 12 inches away. Missed it on. And just be gentle with it. You don't have to have an airbrush to do this. So don't let that intimidate you. All right, so we're going to work light to dark. My point was, is there's nothing fancy. I haven't gone in and done any coloring to the brick on this particular piece. I want one specifically to see what we can do with it. And we may not get all of it done in this stream, but we'll, we'll see how far we can get here. And guys, I apologize if I zone out. Sometimes I, I hear the music and I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna get rolling on this and shut up for a minute. Because I do want you guys to see how fast it is, and I don't want to have to think in the audio content component here. So give me a second to hammer through this and just sit back and relax for a couple minutes here. I'm just, I'm showing you don't have to be like super crazy precise with this te technique. That's the beauty, honestly. It, it's going to take longer, yes. I, and I wholeheartedly understand it. I get it. And it's not going to be for everyone. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm just showing you the technique that I use 
to achieve the results that I get. Okay, so I got a little dry in here. I'm just adding thinner to the brush, coming back. Letting it, let, let, letting it spread out. Again, guys, this is the beauty of, of, of working with oils, in my opinion. And it's gonna dry flat. It's not like, it's not like you're gonna have this greasy, oily substance that you can't work with and manipulate. I think that's maybe what scares people away from oils is like, oh, I don't, I'm not, not familiar with this, don't know how it works. Well, yeah, get in and figure it out. So you're seeing here, I'm just, I'm literally just flooding this surface, and we're we're getting pretty close to to having this. knocked out. I'm starting to see some things I kind of like with uh, how how it streaks. I have to remember that when I get to my windows and I'm adding colors. You see, I don't know if you can see this when it's rolling down, but if I if I take the brush and I pull it down, it's giving me that, that streak line. Um, this is good for when, just good things to take mental note of when when you when you plug into how you may want to manipulate certain areas like under our windows. Uh, you see people get really carried away a lot, especially in the model railroad modeling community. People just think they have to do these crazy big streaks under every window and super dark. And I see it and I'm like, oh, it's so unrealistic. Why, why, why are we doing this? But you know, from two, three feet away, it draws the eye in. So there's some scale components to things that that I get. Now you you should be able to see this on screen, but we're we're getting color shifting in the brick because some of that oil's sitting on top, and and because I saturated the surface a little bit too much, honestly. Now now some of that enamel. From the from the spraying, the, that base spray count is starting to, to lift a little bit. So that's how you know it's it's you got a little bit too much. So instead of instead of continuing to pull the brush across, now I'm back to a dabbing motion with a little bit more paint on the brush, letting letting it sink in and do its thing instead of trying to just draw it across and letting all that capillary action. But you can see here, I mean, there's all kinds of tonal variation in this without really doing anything other than getting the base grout color down. Now, this is not the final color. We still need to come over. We need to hit this with grays. We're gonna add greens, blacks, lots of color that we can add. So, I mean, it's, it's truly a painting method. Just light dab. Dropping it, dropping it in there. And this will be okay. This that kind of a little heavy down in here and you can see it's really it's changed the shade of the brick, which I'm which I'm good with. I think what I'll do is is this will be part of the experiment I wanted to work with with bringing some color up from the bottom. But this all, it's, it looks a little muddy right now, which is okay. We're gonna, we're gonna even all that out in some cases, but brick grout joints are not. It's, it's great, easy to do it on these and get fairly consistent. But even with those, you'll see I, I varied, varied that piece of it. Again, we just drop some more white down in there and it starts to make it come together pretty nicely. Need some more over here. 
And I'm trying to be gentle with the brush as it rakes across the surface. Not, not hitting it very heavy. It's literally just tapping it across. So the corners works great because then I don't have to hit the middle at all. And again, I'm loading that brush up about a quarter to a third. And then just hit that corner. Boom, pulls it all the way into the center. And then as the paint, oil paint leaves the brush, it gets thinner and thinner. But that becomes the base coat that we can work on top of. So let me clean some things up here. Hit this with a hair dryer. I'm getting this about oh 80%. It's it's not perfectly dry. There's still just a slight sheen to it. <clears throat> so that I can I've got some room to work with here. But I think and we'll we'll jump back to this. Let this dry out just a touch more. I want to I want to get work into the bottom here a little bit. Back in with my grays. I think we'll add a little green. We're not going to do any thinner down here in the bottom. We'll see how this rolls. How's that? And I'm just, I'm dragging the brush right across the surface here with this one. right here on this piece of cardboard nothing nothing crazy fancy I'm just adding a dark dark band here and then just want to pull this down a little bit don't want all that dark to sit up top and then we're gonna do this in layers. So, I mean, you can see I just basically I've, I've pulled that gray down into the, the rest of it a little bit. So it's not completely stark. <clears throat> Get more mortar in here. And I think once I get through Some of this we can we can look at see if I can get one dry enough here then come back and, and do a quick like a mortar patch and, and, and guys this this all gets us to this this process I'm using it gets us to this point and it's just a matter of mixing your lights and darks so that it, it suits you and you can start telling the story that you want is an older is it older building newer building now I know why I used this piece the brick detail disappears and I knew I wasn't going to use this in a model Out. All right, so all I did there was I ran my finger across. was just curious to see how much would stick in, and it pulled too much out. So I'm going to add a little bit more because I do want this gray to all settle right down in. And you can do a, the warmer gray by mixing your, your tans in. I'm just, just trying to get this darker gray 
to settle in everywhere. I gotta avoid this side because the brick's all messed up. But you can see here's the difference between the darker cold gray starting with the lights and adding gray with the tan mixed in even though this is wet it's going to still dry darker um, i think it's good to know that now we're going to we're going to add some more black back up i need to sorry about that I need to really right the the tip is all I want is, is drawn underneath that brick is, is all I'm looking for right now. And it's going to find its way down into the mortar. I'm just quick discoloration. I'm going to go ahead and hit the bottom corner here. Maybe we'll see if we can see it. So that you can see how, how it spreads into those joints. So we'll treat this bottom edge as a lot of wear. How's that? I'm just I'm I'm just lightly tapping this. This is a function of having that surface not soaked, but if I spin it, you can see there's a sheen to it. So there's just enough thinner in the oils to get us here. Now, I might be able to come back. It's hard to go light on dark. That's why it's always good to start light, go light to dark, and be methodical with where you place this. But I'll, I'll see if I can hit this with white on top, what happens. Again, raw and uncut. Always, always be, be willing to test stuff. That's how we get better and learn stuff. So I'm gonna load this brush up with just white, no gray. sure I get that tip just to see all right so I'm just see what happens yeah it's like a little bit too much paint live and learn all I did was load it up with a little thinner I like that. It's muddying it up. Slight subtle variation. So that's kind of nice because it, 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 it still has the dark in there. But now I've got a little bit of light, light color on top. I kind of like how that worked. I'll have to mess with that some more. Yeah, okay, so we're gonna mix a little green in to this black in the bottom. Uh, think of this like, a you know, really like an industrial area along the tracks. And, uh, you know, just, not that it's not maintained, but that edge where building meets the ground. This one's a little rough on me. There we go. I'll pull all this, pull some of these greens out here. And again, we're. We're not trying to flood the surface. There's already oil in the surface. We're just we're just tapping. We're, we're adding another layer of color on top. Mixing these greens right on the palette. Nothing. I'm not a not a color scientist. I just. Let's think in terms of grime. 
I'm letting some of the black stay, letting, you know, the green really start to, to seep into the mortar. <laughs> because this is going to add a lot of character. Get on camera here. Duh. This will add a lot of character to the base of your building just with some simple... I mean, we're not, we're not over the top here. It, it looks pretty stark on, on camera. Um, and I'll have to see if I can grab some photos afterward. It's not, I mean, it's it's a big contrast, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't doesn't look like it's quite as crazy as the camera. But the goal here is that we're, we're discoloring the mortar. We're working through mortar, not brick. It's naturally shifting the color of the brick just because we're changing colors in the mortar. You can, once this dries, you, you can take a, a clean brush, and I don't have, I might be able to do a little bit of work on this other one. It's, it's dried up pretty good. But you, you can pull the, the oil off the top of the bricks. So you have that, this control that if, if your brush is dry enough, let's see if I can do it with this. So you can do it with your finger. My finger is what I typically use because the oils in your finger We'll, we'll pull some of that off. But what, what you can do is just get, again, and this is why I know it's not for everybody because you, it's just work. Side of the brush, and you see those burgundies pop. That's just basically pulling the oil. That slight film of oil, maybe you can't see it. All right, so this area here, I just hit with the side of my brush. And that's pulling the oils off the top of the brick, letting the, the true color of the brick pop back to the top. And hopefully, as I do that, you can see that. We're not, we're not flooding the surface with oil. We're literally just pulling that brush across the face of these bricks. And this is where you really get into well, how much do I want. See this pop? And again, subtle. I get it. I get it, guys. It's subtle, but that's the goal. Is, is the way I work here is that I'm, I'm really looking for those subtle shifts by doing simple things like this. And this is just layer one. So for those that, again, I've, I've mentioned previously, if you're looking the fast, down and dirty method for this, this is not it. Not not what this process is about. This is truly about you know trying to create unique models with that little bit extra care given to them with a process that gives you control. I'm, I control how much of this I want to bring to the surface with the with the, the brick color by brushing this just gently across the top. So this area up here, the brick's starting to come back, the mortar has settled down in so that when I get to the gray, layer and start dropping the grays in that gray and the white will mix and start to shift and honestly I stopped I stopped, I did this one and I spent an hour with acrylics. I don't know if you can see them. There's orange bricks, orange, black, and a burgundy off color brick mixed in there. And then I'm like, well, I can get pretty darn close just by, by this shift with the oils that I stopped, I stopped painting the brick. I was like, this is crazy. Well, I'd rather spend that time coming in cleaning things up and and shifting the color in the model or on the face here with this process then going in and, and trying to do it with each individual painting individual bricks and then washing the surface so it just teaches own this is just one technique that is going to be a whole lot, a lot easier for smaller models, uh, probably not your go-to if you're doing like a super, super big model. 
But again, it, all, it just boils down to how much, how much time do you want to pour into a model? And, and, and this really technique probably lends itself more to what's the model front, front and center on your layout kind of thing that you can see that everybody's going to jump into and then, and then starts, oh, what is, have they done that to every one of their buildings? No. This process takes a while. And I'm just dipping my brush in, cleaning, cleaning a little bit of color off the end, wiping it clean. I hope this pops up. Uh, I, I'm just taking the tops off this outside edge. So that brick pops that back through. So now all that's left is a white edge here. And this was a little gray on this side. And I've not used any gray on this yet. So let's do this one. Again, just pulling, pulling the white off the top so it's completely settled down into the bricks there. So imagine what you can do with this when you're when you're working through and you want to do a, like a, a paint patch or something, you, you could actually use the oils to paint the entire surface you want to. I just come in and, and plan your process and mask everything off and rattle can it, mask everything off and airbrush it, and then come in with oils on top. You can manipulate the color that way. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to add some oil and see if I can get this to disperse just a little bit. Drawing some of that mortar color out and across. <clears throat> Put too much in there, so I'm grabbing oil and pulling it. I'm literally just painting, wiping it off, cleaning, wiping off, paint. And that got rid of the 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 brighter spot in there so but I've already got some color shift in this area here just from the grout once I once I wipe this off and, and, I, and I've used like I said my finger um, I'll hit it with a sponge just trying to buff the tops off of everything else and then I'll come back in and add gray on top of this <clears throat> this one's starting to dry up pretty good. Let me see if I can hit it down real quick and we'll go more on this. I'll set this one off to the side. All right, so I'm gonna try and attempt to uh, blend some gray back down into the darker color. We're gonna go with this medium gray. And just see if we can blend the mortar down into We 
want that dark to, to, to stay down there. But you can see the, the dark that we did up top and then we hit it with white, it's dried out quite a bit lighter. <clears throat> Whereas the blacks and greens in the bottom stayed relatively dark, but this is already starting to darken up as it, as it spreads a little bit. And that's where I was wanting to see if maybe we can just bring this mortar color back down into the base. And then I'm gonna do some splatter here in a second just to add a little bit, one more level. And again, remember, the amount of pigment you have, how juicy, how dry it is, is gonna affect this. So if you've got, you know, a real wet color, it's gonna be the more translucent, will tend to sit on top of your color and create you know some some layer layering effects good stuff it's just it's practice i and i don't i'm not i'm not an expert at this um, every piece i do is, is some type of we're, we're, we, we continue to practice with with, with techniques and and i'm not trying to shift by adding this gray to the bottom I'm just trying to blend by adding a trans a little bit of a transparency to it so it starts pulling some of this color together. All I did was hit oil that time. I'm just dabbing. Because it's pulling some of that black from previous up in. So I'm mixing that lighter gray and the blacks and greens are starting to work their way up a little bit. So and then I pull them back down. Again, I'm, and if you can see here, I'm trying to get the faces of the brick to pop through by using the brush with just oil on it and at the same time blending these colors I have already on the model. That, that's, what I'm, that's, that's just what I'm trying to do with this particular piece here. See if I can get this a little bit more subtle. I still want to see the dark. I'm going to call that that's what I'm, I'm good with that I'm going to hit that with a hairdryer seal that in And again, that contrast at the bottom might be a little bit much for some, but heavy industrial area, I, I think it's it would look great. Um, you know, old yard office kind of thing. Um, especially if there's is a dock above. I mean, this to me, this is I love it. So, all right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stay on this one because I, I want to show something here real quick as part of this. Um, and it really, it really comes back to some of the techniques and things of, of splatter. I just want to show it. So we're going to mix up some browns and grays and, and we get, we get juicy. We get juicy. We're going to get juicy for this one. I'm just going with a straight, uh, I think this is raw umber. There we 
And I'm doing this on white, so hopefully you can you can see it. And it's it's a little wet, so things are dispersing. I tried to dry it, but and, and this is part of me still learning this technique. So we oh, here, let me do this. I'll show you before I move on and add a layer on top. So yeah, so now you can see all this speckling and stuff in the bottom. That's what's going to add kind of a final layer of depth to this piece. Um, and again, I'm thinking like a in heavy industrial area where when it rains and pours, that dirt and mud and grime is splashing up into this bottom layer. And you can carry it up as high as you want. I just want to show the technique. So as this dries, it becomes more and more subtle. And then you can hit it with blacks. You can hit it with a, a lighter color to add all that depth. The armor guys have this perfected. And again, it's one more thing that I know is just, it's, well, that's a lot of work. Yeah. Okay. Well, it is what it is. I mean, I think part of it is, like I mentioned at the beginning, is do you enjoy, you know, adding this kind of stuff to your model without, you know, relying on a sponge technique? But yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, so I'm pure black. I can't remember if this is lamp black or I I, I forget which one it is. But to me, this 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 gets some contrast in here. I'll show this here in a second. I may not actually have it. You can probably see it, hopefully you can see it on the paper, even. I'm trying to keep it down here closer to the bottom edge. And then I'm going to come back and hit it with a light color on top. And I'm just using the backside of a set of a tweezers. I want that black out. I'll show you the model here in a second. And I think this is where we'll go ahead and wrap up today's raw and uncut is after I get this done so you can kind of see how this can be applied to everything. Because the piece I'm working on for the 10 minute video, I'm trying to combine everything I've done here in an hour into that 10 minutes of t technique. And I may have to leave the splatter piece out of that. So that's why I need to get through and, and work on, on how I'm gonna splice, cut, and, and potentially get all that stuff together for 10 minutes, because I know some people don't want to sit here and watch me paint for an hour. I, I get it, I don't like to do it either. I like to get in, figure out what the content is, and, and if it's great content, then I'll sit, but sometimes I just like, okay, how do you do it, how do you do it? All right, so now you can see there's another layer. That's black on top, that's black speckling. Now we're gonna hit this with a, a like a dusty gray, just so that you can see it. And I've not, I've not done this one in this order. Usually I go light to dark, that's how I did the, the box. But I just wanna see what's gonna happen if we pull a dust color to the top of this. It should just be pretty subtle. Oh, I still got some black in there. We don't want that. I'm gonna switch brushes, just in case. This is juicy. Yep, there we go. Let's see. I don't know. We'll see what it does. May balance it out. That's not bad. Again, layers, hard to go wrong with layers, honestly.
All right, so then that. You see just those small speckles in the bottom, this, this whole base is starting to really come alive. Now, if you wanted to go in and paint individual bricks in beforehand, you could. I mean, I, clearly I still see the color of the brick in, in, in this piece as a test piece. But you can see the different, I got three layers of speckle in there, a raw umber, a black, and then I, I finished with a, a white. So this is, this is old industrial. Whereas I would say this is, this would be, you know, fairly new construction. Um, and this is just some gray work. So this is a, a this is a tan mortar on this side. This is a gray mortar up top. This was tan, I think, previously, and I'd start mixing in some like raw, real thin down raw umber on top. And then this is grimy, crazy industrial. And it's hard to see that that the the brick color is still there. But to me, that's the goal with this piece. So I'm gonna wrap it up here with this today. Um, I think this is just a good. Overall, again, the 10 minute, the raw 10 minute video will get specifically into how I set up this, this piece, just because I know that some people are going to be completely foreign to it. I'll go over real quick the size of the brushes I use and the oils. I'll, I'll have all that more organized and on the table. And then I think what I'll do is I'll take one of my, my small pieces, I'll do this, and then I'll just, I'll, the demonstration will literally be a, a raw piece like this, for those that want to come stick around for that, and I will flood the surface, dry it out, boom, done, without going into all the specifics of, of kind of some of the things we covered today with this. Um, and I'll, I'll try and grab some, some good pictures of this um, to, to, to post up for, for folks to take a look at as well. So, hey, I appreciate you guys tuning in um, and watching the video um, for this, this specific technique on, on weathering with uh, acrylics and or oils over acrylics and enamels so i'll wrap it up here uh, again if you got any comments questions drop them uh, drop them below in the comments I'm, I'm usually pretty good about getting to those within a day or two and uh and i can answer any of those questions you know as part of this video as well or if there are things you want me to cover specifically in another video um, with a more in-depth build i'm happy to take a look at that as well so with all that being said have an amazing day and go do some modeling